delighted to have you here and uh, this is just a lot of fun for me to be able to meet people that I've never known before and to talk to them about their perspective and uh, even though I've been an admirer from afar. I, I was fascinated several years ago as you had to make the choice about your personal health and about your, your family and to step away uh, from coaching. Uh, that had to be an incredible dramatic time in your life, but I just was just amazed with it. Would you mind sharing with us a little bit about what was taking place in your life at the time? Yeah, I, I uh, was, it's a, as I, as I took a year off from football, I found out it was a issue, not unique though. A lot of people deal with this issue. It's in the mid forties, maybe early fifties, where maybe you've hit it, you know, you, you start on a career path and maybe you reach near the top of your career path and then issues start to make you reevaluate. I did, I had some issues. I had a health, two health related issues that made me sit back and really think. I lost a friend, a, a great coach, died of a heart attack when he was 52 years old. We won two national championships. Uh, my girls are getting ready to leave for college. Uh, I always never wanted to be that guy. And when I talk about that guy, we all know that guy. He's the guy that looks back on his career when he's 60 years old and said, boy, you know, we won some championships. I, my 401k is fine, but you know what? I never saw my kids and my marriage is a mess. And I never wanted to be that guy. And I'm, I, we had so many rituals I had in my life that every Wednesday was date night with my daughters. Every Thursday was family day. All the families from all the coaching staffs had to be there for dinner. And every Sunday we had a church service. All the families had to be there, the players' families. So that was at least three days a week that I was getting that good, solid family time. On Thursday nights, I'd go home afterwards and spend time with my family. And not many coaches do all those things. So I had it in order. Uh, I started to lose that. You know, we won 22 mm -hmm. games straight. We were ranked number one. We just won a national championship. Uh, Florida's never had a perfect season. Uh, we were in the chase for perfection. And I had these chest pains for about two or three years that I was dealing with. And I thought I, I knew something was wrong. And they couldn't tell me what exactly was wrong. So I had that going on me. But then I, I started losing this weight. Like I said, I was down to 180. I'm usually 215. And then I had a real bad night. I ended up in a hospital and that's when I made the decision and my daughter uh, came home from college. She was here at Georgia Tech and I'm very close with her and she just looked at me crying one night and says, you don't have to coach, why are we doing this? I couldn't answer that question anymore. When she said why, I couldn't answer it. You know, I couldn't answer for the love of the game, for the love of my players, for the love of my staff. I couldn't answer that question anymore. So I sat back and said, you know, I got the best job in the country, I got the best boss. I'm at the great place, Florida. We love it here. But I think God's telling me it's time to yeah. say time out. I've talked to a lot of people that in their late 40s, their early 50s, they have a, a big crisis that happens in their life. Uh, that's maybe not all that uncommon that we come. I just applaud the fact that you were made such an incredibly courageous uh, decision. You know, I've had hundreds of people contact me, you know, hundreds uh, via email, phone call, letters um, who have gone through the same thing. I didn't realize a lot of my friends went through it. Like you said, there was some situation that happened in her life where they sat back and said, why am I doing this? There's a great book out there, Lead for God's Sakes. Uh, Lead for God's Sake. And it's, it changed my life. I was on a plane for an ESPN. I read it, I basically read it one day. And it's a story of a high school coach that the reason he got into coaching was mentoring, teaching, and be, making an impact in these young people's lives. And then he started winning like crazy. And he forgot what his real purpose was, why he got into coaching. And I, that kind of, when I read that book, I, it was last spring, and I started thinking to myself, I mean, that, that was one of those moments. And I said, I'm going back, if I go back, I'm going back to the reason I did get into coaching originally, to mentor, impact young people. Wow. Is that you're related to your own personal definition of success, this whole issue of mentoring? I think so. I think, uh, you know, it's a gift, uh, it's a gift of grace. You know, we, to, to say you're a leader, you earned it, you didn't earn it. It was given to you. To say I'm a leader, that I didn't, you know, that's that's too self prophesy you know, it's so fulfilling to say I earned it, you didn't earn anything. It's a gift, it's a gift from our Creator, so what are you going to do with that gift? And my gift is, and I've been put in a position of leadership, is to mentor and teach them how to do it the right way. At the end of the day, there's a right way and a wrong way, there's no gray area. And uh, uh, I take that real serious, I probably took it too serious in trying to change people. Our job is to teach them, mentor them, however, the greatest gift we all have is free will. We can't change people. We can mentor them and show them, but you can't change people. 
I, I want to thank you for being such an incredible personal inspiration for me and thousands of other people out there as well. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Dad.